Hi everybody. Before I get started on the video, I just want to give you all a heads up. This is a long video. I take over an hour, almost an hour and a half, maybe longer, to thoroughly diagnose and figure out what is wrong with this keyboard. So it's not a five minute quickie you can run away. And I hope that you don't watch this the first 10 minutes and think, oh, I got it, or rewind to the end and see what's happening. Because I do, I do give a lot of information in this video. I joke around a little bit too, but I really do spend a lot of time explaining what I'm doing here. And giving you a lot of insight into how I think and how the world works sometimes. So, sit back, get yourself a soda or a drink, some cop popcorn, grab the cat, watch the video, enjoy it. Hope you like it. Let me know in the comments if you do. And if you're not a subscriber, please, please subscribe. Thank you. Hi everyone, a fellow named Mark on Bookface posted that he didn't have any data packs to test the anatomy he had. So I contacted him and I said, I'll send you one, I'll make a copy of a couple from the archive and send it to him, just, just, out of the, just to be nice actually. And we got talking back and forth and I discovered that his keyboard wasn't working. That certain section, he says the Q through, uh, I guess the Y, a certain row is not working. So I said, send it to me. Let me look at it. Let me see if I can figure out what's wrong with it. I'll make a video out of it. So he sent me that, and that's what I'm going to work on. Oh, and by the way, don't look at that. that that's, that's a work in progress. That's one of my summer projects. You probably know the name of it. It don't exist on a ColecoVision, but it does now. And it's not, an, it's not a port. But anywho. Oh, and just so you know, it's not a picture. He moves around. Check out that smooth scrolling. You ever seen anything scroll so smoothly on the Atom? Anywho, back to the meaning of the video. Mark sent me his keyboard and I'm going to plug it into my system here and figure out what's wrong with it. So we're gonna do that right now. To do that, I'm going to, first off, I'm gonna turn off the ADE and unplug it so that it doesn't get in the way. I'm going to then take my keyboard here and unplug it. I gotta watch because the key the cable stretched pretty tight, so I don't want to drop it and have to get on the floor and dig it out. So yeah, we got Mark's keyboard plugged in. Now I'm just gonna reset and boot into Smart Writer, and I'm just gonna test the keys. I should have my volume a little louder. Nothing on tab, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, O, I. So it's from tab to U. I'm pressing the controls up in here, move, store, get, clear, insert. All right, so the keys that are not working are Q through. Q through U. So the Q, W, E, R, T, Y, and U key. Those right there aren't working. So I'm gonna unplug this. I'm gonna go over to the bench. I'm gonna pull it apart and we're gonna see what we got going on inside. All right, so here we are over here at the bench with Mark's keyboard. I'm gonna use a screwdriver and I got my little container here that I put my screws in. Taking these keyboards apart are relatively easy. There's six screws on the top, or on the bottom. Three along this edge, three along that edge. So when we get deeper in is when they get to be a little complicated and difficult. But it's not that hard. This is not as bad as other keyboards. I have seen some really bad keyboards. I mean, it doesn't, uh, let's see, the Commodore 64 keyboard sucks. I say sucks, I mean, I'm not saying the keyboard itself sucks, uh, the construction sucks, because besides the fact you have to unsolder one wire, it also has 
umpteen number of screws and all these little things in it. It's, it, it's a pain. I mean, yes, this has screws. I'm going to give you that. So what we did is I unscrewed that, pulled that off there. Now, see the keyboard is here, and this membrane here goes down into a little computer that's actually in it. And it actually is a computer. There's a 6801 microprocessor in there with 1K of read-only memory built into it. And its sole purpose in life is to wait for a message from the Atom on the AtomNet saying, Hey, device, I believe it's 15 keyboard. Device 15, you got something for me? And at that point, device 15. Oh, this is loose there. That's not good. And at that point, device 15, which is a keyboard, if it has a key that's been... At that point, I'm actually... What it's doing, okay, let's, let's, let's start oversimplify that too much. The keyboard device 15, this right here, the microprocessor in here, is continuously scanning the keys and storing up to 14 key presses in its built-in memory. I don't think it's memory as much as it may be storing it in its registers, but it could be memory, I could be wrong there. And then what it does after that is it holds on to them and as soon as it gets a, I'm just checking something here, make sure I'm putting it in the way I want to put it. No, I don't. I'm going to turn it the other way. You may be wondering, what are you doing, Millie? No, I do want to turn it that way. My bad. What are you doing, Millie? All right, so, and I do believe, I'll show you what. Let me finish my little story here. All right, the 6801 microprocessor that's in here is scanning the keyboard, and it stores up to 14 key presses in registers or memory or whatever. And then, when it picks up a message going through the atom net, which plugs in here, saying device 15, what's your status, what do you have, it'll send back the key. If it has a key. If it doesn't have a key, it says no key. Waits for another device 15, what's your status, it sends back the key. So, this is a computer that's sitting there reading the serial port continuously and sending back the information. Just like the disk drives or computers, Continuously reading the asset serial port, the Atomnet, it is a serial port. It runs at 62,500 baud, but it's only one line, so it's kind of messy in that transmit and receiver are all connected in the same one, so I guess it could get a big mess after a while. But um, the disk drives have the same thing, they have a chip in them. And it's interesting, Howard Eaglestein, the guy, one of the guys that helped develop the data drives and the disk drives, the disk drives, their CPUs are actually bad data drive CPUs that they put in there and then they added an EEPROM or a ROM that overrides the internal programming of the microprocessor. But, so we got a computer on here. The printer has a computer, it does the same thing. It listens to, uh, I can't remember which one. This might be device one. I might be wrong. This might be device one. Actually, hold on a second. All right, instead of me trying to tell you which one it is off of memory, here are the devices. The keyboard is device one. The printer is device two. Copywriter, which I don't know what copywriter is. I've never seen one. Is device three. Then your four disk drives, up to four disk drives, are four, five, six, and seven. Your tape drive, tape one is device eight. Tape two is 18H or 24. Tape three is device nine. Tape four is, what was it, 25 or 19H. Tape 10 is unused. Tape 11 was a modem, which I've never seen. Tape 12 is some form of high resolution monitor to plug in here. We've never seen. 13 is a Centronics interface. I think a prototype exists of that. Tape 14 is an RS-232 interface. Or tape. Device 14 is RS-232 interface. I believe we've seen a prototype of that. And tape, or device 15, I believe, I could be wrong, is some form of networking system that lets them communicate between each other. So this is fascinating. So this is, this is all the information that it uses, and it talks back and forth to all these different devices. And it's all handled by the Master 6801 that's on the Atom. Inside the Atom, there's actually two 6801s. There's the Master 6801, and then there's a 6801 that runs the two data drives that are internal. To add tapes three and four, you would have needed a 6801 Master, and I don't think they ever built that. It'd be kind of cool to build one. I mean, maybe you could. Maybe you could just, I don't know. Make a ROM like they do with the disk drives, but make one for the data drives that has it read those two devices and the support program or the support hardware for it, and plug them into the network with two data drives. And but but why bother? 
when you have the SDDDP out there, which is the data drives on SD cards. So back to where I was at. This right here, I turned this upside down here. It lets me work on it, but it pushes the keys a little bit. So I have to put a little bit of lift in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. All right, so I just recalled that instead of spacers, what I did the last time is I took the two of the screws that mounted the keyboard, just slightly put them in the hole so that they don't come out. So like maybe two or three turns. And then what I do is you take this and set that on here and take the other two screws and mount this here. Now you may ask, well, why are you going through all of this, Millie? Why don't you just take the thing apart? Because I don't want any pressure on the keys. Because as soon as I get this thing apart, if I have to dig in here and I have to pull the back off and get the membrane out, as soon as there's no pressure on the keys, they're popping the little rubber domes everywhere. And I don't want the rubber domes going flying. So, this is what I do to hold it in place. Now, I'll just flip it here. You can see, there is no thing touching. None of the keys are touching plastic, so they're just hanging down loose and they're just enjoying life. So now what I'm going to do is i got to open that up and I need my need those pliers to remove these two little screws, or two little nuts. Once I get them started, they'll come out easily. There's a washer right here. If I can get this thing to... Alright, washer, you want to play? I can play too. I has the technology, Mr. Washer. You want to mess with me? I got a very strong magnet. Come here. Get up here. You too. Get up here. See? Messing around with me. Anyway, I talk to the washer. Put all my little things back up here on my light. So what I just did is I removed those two. These other two, I don't know why they didn't bother putting screws on there. Instead, they just have this little friction thing right there. And sometimes it just pops out easily. But other times, it's just best just to take a screwdriver and just bend that tab up a little bit. Yeah, now it comes out. It's soldered right there. Huh. Slightly magnetic. It's soldered right there, so I can't just like pull those off and go crazy. But if I lift it up, I can get it off that rubber grommet and get it out of the way. Now, see, what we have in here, just so you can see what we got, is that's your 6801 with the, the EPROM or, or the ROM on it that handles the keyboard. And here's all the little few pieces of support circuitry that do all the, pro all the work for it. Now what we're going to do is, I was looking, first I'm looking to see if there's anything wrong, like it's not connected, but it's connected pretty good. So I'm going to just wiggle this thing out, I said wiggle this thing out, like so. Again, I don't see any damage right there. See, there's no, like nothing missing on the membrane, so I'm pretty sure the damage is inside. Remove these two spacers, there's two small ones and two big ones, lift this up. And that takes the whole keyboard assembly or the whole keyboard computer off. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta remove these here. Again, they have washers on them. Oh, it's missing a washer here, and that's got a different washer. Oh no, got it. That washer was on the bottom of the printed circuit board. But what am I doing that for? Come here, Mr. Magnet again. Come here, come here, up, up you go. I trimmed back my claws a couple days ago, so it's hard to pick things up. I always seem to do that, trim my claws back just in time to start working on computers and then I can't pick anything up. I'm like digging, it can't do it. Then we take our little needle nose again and just loosen those up. And again, it does have another washer. Or it should. Sometimes they don't. And I'm going to attribute to the fact that sometimes when you get these things in your keyboards and stuff from Coleco and you take them apart and it's missing something, like it's missing washers or the screws are not the same or something. I'm going to attribute that to the fact that it was made on Monday. So they were short. Come on, let go. Last one, don't let go. I mean, it could always be the obvious other reason could always be that someone's had it apart before and didn't put it back together and they just ended up with a bucket of bolts left over 
We all done that. Now, to get this apart here, I gotta remove all these screws. And if you wanna count along with me, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 screws. There are 21 screws on the bottom of the Commodore 64 keyboard. Hence why I don't like it. Remove the screw. All these screws are the same. I don't believe any of these are different from the other ones, so you don't have to like keep them separate. Though again, I have pulled apart Clico Adam keyboards that had mixed screws. So, was that another Monday keyboard or was that somebody got in there working on it? I don't know. So what we're doing, just in case you're wondering, well, why are you taking it apart, Millie? We want to get this membrane out. We want to look at that membrane. We want to see what's going on with the... I'm assuming it's going to be a row, not a column. If you watch my videos on the ZX81 and Timex Sinclair 1000s where I worked on the keyboards, I explained some how the rows and columns work. But in essence, the way they are is you have columns going this way of membranes and you have... Ro er, uh, of traces then you have rows of traces going this way and they don't touch each other until you press a key and then column one may t may touch row one and the microprocessor inside translates column one row one to be the letter A or the letter Q or the letter whatever and since you can only these are 8 bits so they usually only have 8 bits of data you can only get 8 um, bits in Normally what happens is the row is eight characters one, this way. So you would strobe column one and look at row one and whatever bit was on would tell you which key was pressed. And since we have a whole string of them, Q through U I believe it was, which is how many characters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven characters, surprisingly not eight, but I don't think, maybe the tab wasn't working. I didn't, I don't think I tested the tab. But that makes me think it's just that one row, which is nice because then it tells me where to look. Now, if I have random keys all over the place, then I'm like, okay, the membrane is busted. Let's get a new membrane. If you have just one row of keys or one column of keys, and by column, I really can't pull this keyboard. In. Now, hold on. I have plenty of atoms around here. So by column, I would mean a column could be one, two, three, this way. See? 1, Q, A, Z, and then it might go up the other side, N, J, I, N. On the Timex Sinclair 1000, the rows and columns are a lot easier to work with because there's only 10 across, so you have 5 columns and you have 8 rows. 8? No, you only have 4, but it splits them over. So you have this right here is a column, 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 and so forth. Then these four is a row, or these five are a row, I'm sorry, and then these five are a row. So it works out. Now, back to the big reveal. We're going to lift this thing off and see what we got underneath there. There's little rubber domes underneath this membrane, so they may go popping and go flying. Didn't. Very good. See, that's the back of it right there. A little moisture there, see that? That's been. I'm just smelling it to see what it is, and it's just moisture. Okay, so that's been wet sometimes. Sometimes you can get mold actually in here, and it stops it from working. Now I'm going to gently remove the membrane and try not to lose any. I lost a couple. Any of these little rubber domes. See all the little rubber domes. I got bags of these rubber domes here. If you ever break a keyboard and you need to replace the plunger, which is. I'll just show you a plunger. You ever need to replace a plunger? Yeah, like he said, that's a plunger right there. When you press a key, it goes up and it pushes on this rubber dome, which then in turn presses on the membrane. You ever need to replace a plunger or a key or a rubber dome? I have those. I only have one extra of these right now. Yeah, this is really—it's got moisture on it. I don't like that. But let's just see what we got to work with here. Two. Put this keyboard over here so I can see. I want to do some translating or some comparisons. Yeah, this thing has to be cleaned. Definitely is dirty. Hold on a second. All right, so I'm gonna just put it on here. I want to dry this thing off. I don't know what got on it, but it's damp. 
and I'm seeing something right here. I'm not gonna say what it is yet because I gotta look closer. Let's try this off here. Now these are three layers. You have a layer that is the top layer right here, which is the columns. You have the columns. You have the bottom layer, which is the rows. Then you have a separating layer, which is just clear plastic that has holes in it. These are usually sandwiched to the point where you can open them up if you wanted to. I'm just trying to see if I can just lift it up just a little bit because I'm probably going to have to get in there anyways. Where is your little edge? Right here. So see, you can pull it apart, which I'm probably going to end up doing here. But I want to see something here. I'll do that in a minute. I just want to see if it's an external thing. I don't want to take it apart unless I know for sure. Now again, the keys that we're looking at are right here. Q, W, E, R, T, Y, and U. See, now they all have different columns, but they all have the same row. Now, what I want to do is, hold on a second, ready to go. You ever notice I always say hold on a second, but through the magic of editing, I don't have to hold on a second. I can just like fast forward through things. I want to mark the keys I'm looking at. So, we got that one right there, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, and U. And that one right there. That row right there. Now, as I said, you can see, different column. They're all different columns. And we know the columns work, because if any of the columns are bad, then the other keys below it wouldn't work. Now, if we look here, they all use this same row here. And the tab's on that one, too. And I didn't test that tab. And if you look, this, okay, this is my keys right here. It comes up to here. And then, let me just find something I can pull it. So this row right here, that's including tab. Again, I didn't test tab. Comes up to here, then that line straight up here and out to there. So it doesn't go very far. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test this by. Oh, it looks like I might have to open. Where where is the membrane? What side is it on? You can feel the membrane usually, unless they buried it in the plastic. It's on this side right here, okay. I'm gonna get my continuity tester. Where is it? Which is fascinating, and, and one of the groups, if you don't like criticism about what you do, never post stuff on Facebook. Because I posted on Facebook my last video that I did, and one of the guy's comments was, where'd you get that broke ASS multimeter from, Walmart? Yeah. I paid seven bucks for it at Walmart. Why should I buy a different one, right? GE, it works for me. Want a better one? Buy me one. Anyways, I'm gonna use my continuity meter. I was actually at Home Depot um, here, let's diverge off. I was at Home Depot yesterday morning getting some parts for an upcoming video. And I was looking for a continuity meter that's just a tone there I can just use, so I don't have to look over there. And they didn't have any, which sucked. So what I wanna do is I wanna see, does this thing, Alright, so yeah, it's yeah, it's on the inside with sucks. Is it? Yeah, see it's on the inside and then they covered it with plastic. Can I get to it? Where is there any way of getting to it at all? No, they really covered it good. So I'm gonna have to open this up. Let's open it. Maybe I can just clean it then too. It might just be so as you just oh we got some gunk in there. As you saw, I opened it up. I'm still looking at this row right here. See, that row right there, and I can now actually test and see if those rows have continuity. I can verify if it's this. I'll put this over here so you can see. I can verify if it's the trace that's bad inside or if it's outside the trace, because there is always a possibility that the connector is weak. So I'm just going to see, do I get electricity from there there? And I do. So I know electricity is going down that whole row there. You see that? That whole row, which is the bad row, is getting electricity. So there's no break there. Now let's just check and see if there's a break from there to, let's see, oh, we got this one right here. That's that one right there. Electricity is getting out of it. So, so we can just take this. I'm going to get a piece of paper towel. Piece of paper towel. I can just wipe this off. And I'm going to put it back together because there's nothing wrong with this. That row, which is not working, works on here. So there's nothing wrong with that. I don't need to touch that. So what I'm gonna do is take my keyboard back here and I'm gonna put it back together. 
Then we're going to concentrate on the other side. We're going to concentrate on the computer part. Now, some of you may say, well, why didn't you just try to unplug it first and plug it back in? Maybe it was just had a bad connection. You know what? Maybe it did. But what would we have learned from that? Absolutely nothing. And I wouldn't have looked like I knew what I'm talking about. So, set that down here as such. Remember, notice, very gentle with these things. Be very gentle. These don't replace, there's no replacements for these unless you tear another one out of a computer. Now this goes on a certain way, like this. You can, now if one of these traces was bad, you can fix them. And I was going to show you how to fix them. I did show in the Thomas Sinclair 1000, the ZX81 parts um, 3 and 4 videos where I actually repaired the membranes. You can repair the membranes in two ways I have learned now. One is you buy conductive ink, which is what I've always done in the past, and you just use conductive ink to rebuild the trace. That works good. The other way is something that I learned really fascinating that I have in the other video is I took a very small, very, very small piece of wire, and I laid it on the trace, and then I took a piece of tape, because, like, let's say for instance it was out here, and it wasn't going anywhere. I laid it on the trace, I put a piece of tape on it to hold it completely in place so it couldn't go nowhere. Then I put a piece of super strong duct tape on it so it could never go anywhere. And it just bridged the break. Worked just great. So why not just replace it? Well, yeah, I could have replaced it. But see, that fixed it. And then I can put it back together and never think about it again. Because this ain't moving. There's no flexibility in that. It's just going to sit in there and just be happy. Now, I'm going to put this back together. Again, we're going to do all these screws. And do you remember how many there were? I don't. Wasn't it 16? Something like that. You could probably notice a um, little Kathy Chatterbox today. I haven't done a video in like two weeks, which I do, I really do apologize for. I have been spending a lot of time doing a couple other things. One thing was I made power supplies for the atoms. I made 20 of them in total in the past month and a half that I sold, which helps support the Atom Archive and helps support me. Supporting the Atom Archive, if you know what I mean. And then I spent some time and I did some custom collector edition cartridges for the Bitcoin miner, which you, I don't know if you saw the video of those. They came out really nice. Glossy gold. Serial numbers 1 through 5, limited edition of 5 only. And then I purchased 30 data drives which I do have a video on there you may have seen of me unboxing the last mail call video is 30 data drives so I've been cleaning them up and selling them and then dealing with the repercussions of people not understanding that old equipment can sometimes wear out and that instead of blowing a gasket you work with the person that gets the old equipment, takes, maintains the old equipment, fixes the old equipment. That you work with them and they work with you and everybody's happy and the community goes along and we're all good. And instead of popping a gasket and blowing your top and whatever other words you want to use. And Okay, I was going to say, where, I'm short two screws, but no, they're right around the corner there. So here we go. Almost done. Then what I was going to do is, I was going to take the keyboard con control. I'm going to look at that one. Eh, I dropped the screw. See, now this is why you would take and you mount this thing on the keyboard like this to hold it in place. There's no pushing, there's no stressing, the rubber domes don't pop out of the way, nothing. I have rebuilt keyboards where the rubber domes are popping out of place and I'm like trying to balance the keyboard on a book so that the keys are being pressed and there's a line moving around. That, that was in my days of every two or three months I'd pull my, that's back during my smoking days, back when I was a real bad smoker, really bad, smoking's bad for you, okay? And I would have to take my computer apart, keyboard apart every couple of days, or every couple of days every couple months and I would take it apart complete it and you wash it all down put it back together because I was kind of OCD on the fact I wanted my keyboard clean and I didn't like the fact it was all full of ashes this on my PC my heavy programming one so yeah 
Now we got that there. Let's just switch it, build the rest of it here. Put the rest of the parts on here. When these go back on, the long ones go in the back, the short ones come in the front. They may, you may not notice a difference, but there is a difference in the size. How does he know that, you ask? Because I've put them back together wrong before. I've taken these things apart so many times over the past six years that I've been tinkering with the atoms. I don't think I've given a history of my atom before. Prior to 2015, I, had, I didn't have an atom. I was really into basically everything else. Mostly the Timex 1000 because I like the simplicity of it. But back in 90, 80, no, 89, I had an Atom I purchased up in Alaska. I purchased the Atom and a keyboard and printer. The, the, basically the whole thing on, without a box. I got it at a yard sale. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. This was cool, but sucked because I didn't have any software for it. Or data drive. So I did find a magazine and I bought a disk drive from somebody. I don't know who it was, but it was in Michigan area. So who knows? It could have been ANN. It could have been NIAD. I don't know who it was, but it was somebody I bought back in 91. I bought a disk drive from them. So if anybody who used to work for them has like their customer database from back then, look for William Hicks out of Anchorage, Alaska. That'd be kind of cool. But anyways, I bought the disk drive and I got the disk drive there and I hooked it all up and it's like, yay. Still can't do anything. All I have is Smart Basic on Data Pack. And then it broke. Smart Basic broke. So now I had a really pretty typewriter with a, with a tape drive, or a disk drive. So, anywho, I ended up selling the Atom for, I think I made a profit. I think I sold it for 50 bucks. But I kept the disk drive. And a few months later, when we moved into a different place of Anchorage, I got back into my Atari because I'm really into the Ataris. Love the Ataris. I got my Atari set up, I had my 800, I had my 600 XL, I had a 1200 XL, I had a 400, I had them all. I had my 800 with three data drive, or three disk drives running, it was running a bulletin board, and I wanted to do more disk drives, and I had CPM computers too, I was really into CPM, and I wanted to do more disk drives, and I had one drive, I believe it was an Indus or a Percom, or one of those non-branded, Atari branded one. But if you looked at it on the back, it had an attachment to plug a secondary drive, a slave drive into it. And I opened up the Atom and realized, you know what? <laughs> I unplugged the, dark, the disk drive mechanism from the board, plugged it into the back of the program. It became drive four of my Atari system. It worked great when I ran the bulletin board for a year and a half or thereabouts. And then, I don't know how, what happened to him. Somewhere I sold him a long way because they didn't make it down here to New, uh, when I moved down to New York. They didn't make it back down here. Okay, so enough of the reminiscing. This is ready to be put to the side here for right now. And I'm going to take a look at this. I'm going to check these connectors down here. Just make sure nobody is... Is this thing moving? This has some movement in it. But I don't see any movement in the solder joints. No, I don't see any movement in the solder joints there. Can I determine which one is what? Here, let me see. I think I can determine which connector on here I tested. Yeah, it would be that one right there. So what I'm looking at, I'm looking right here. It's gonna, I don't want to zoom the camera in because last time I zoomed the camera in, I left it zoomed in and the rest of the video, people all, they saw it like this much of the screen. But that one right there, the one that has a scratching on it, that's the one that I use, the multimeter one. So which one does that one line up to? Because that's going to help me. Let's just put this right here. You want it right now. Let's see which one that one is, because that's going to help me figure out if that one is working. That's this one right here. See, I just want to find out the connector, which connection that one is, because we did, again, we remember, we know this thing works out there. And logically, and it could be wrong, logically, that has to be an issue, that row, because for it to have a problem with eight columns, but only on that row is impossible. Now, it's quite, it is quite possible something else is broke. Maybe there's a resistor on here is broke. Maybe something on the actual board is bad. And that's always a possibility, but I'm checking the mechanicals right now. And if that turns out to be the case, I'll swap apart and we, we narrow it down. 
So, I'm going to take my continuity tester again. My old broke a Walmart continuity tester. And I'm just going to check. No, I'm going to have to get this one off the back. Okay, let's get you out of the way because I don't need you here. I just wanted to try to chase down this pin. So, let's just see. Let's see what that pin is. It's that pin right here. Let's get my marker out. Let's going to continue. We're going to mark this one over here. It's that pin right there. So, it's right there. It's right there. That pin. Let's see. What I want to do is I'm going to touch that side there. And I want to see if... I right, see I'm making it through there. See that? Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it. Up here on the... It's hard to see. That's why I should have a sound one. Anybody's feeling especially nice and wanting to buy me one, you can buy me one. So we've been there. It's good. We get there. It's good. All right. So we do know this connector is good. Well, let's just check something here. This sh it shouldn't have any wobble. This should not wobble out of place. So I'm just going to go right here. Hold that there, and I'm moving the connector around. And no, there's no break in that trace. So that trace is good. So we know we're getting over there. And then this thing plugs directly into the... Yeah, it plugs directly into... Let's just check this one again. Where you at? Okay, it's that one right there. That goes directly over here to you. Or you. Which one do you go to? That one right there. Alright, so we do know it's getting to the microprocessor. <sighs> the reason I'm saying that is, see, I'm right here. I'm touching this one right here. And if I flip over, that's microprocessor land right there. So we may have a problem with the microprocessor. I do have an extra one of them. Though, at that point, I'm getting down to the point where I don't want to give out the extra ones of those because those are like a very limited thing. Anybody who feels like building something for the Atom, I'm going to have to stop because I'm going to switch over here. Let me stop battery and I'll come back. Alright, so what I had to do is I had to stop and come back because I can only get 29 minutes per recording on my phone. Well, it's not my phone, my camera. And I think I'll take a drink of the old sippy sippy, get some coffee in. As I was saying, anybody feels like building something, you know, if anybody likes to build things for the atom, people are like, oh, I'm going to make it. A new disk drive thing. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You feel like making something for the Atom? We need a replacement for the 6801. Because, again, this has the built-in, the ROM is built into it. So we need a replacement for the 6801 that plugs into it that has an EEPROM on it. The source code exists for all of these. So we can burn new EEPROMs to put on there. But we need a replacement for the 6801 that can plug in that has an EEPROM on it. Or if somebody wants to get really crazy, I'm going to make me an Arduino, or I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this, and I'm going to just reset the 6801. So that's just to make sure we've got a good connection here. I'm not going to take it out all the way. I just want to loosen up the thing so I can reset it back in. Yeah, it's stuck in there pretty good, too. Come here. You come here. I'm slowly working it up so I don't take a chance of breaking anything. But I'm starting to think it may just be the issue, maybe this here. Well, I'm hoping that maybe it was just a connector was the issue. But I'm starting to think it might be the microprocessor because I don't think that any support circuitry on this board will affect one pin. But the microprocessor is going to have a bad pin. So I'm just looking right here to make sure nothing's bent, nothing's corroded. Everything looks very clean. I see nothing down in there. I could, and you know what, I will. I don't have any contact cleaner at the moment here. I keep forgetting to get that when I go into the Wally World. But I does have my acetyl alcohol. So I'm just going to put some in there. Just make sure it's got nothing sticking in it. And use this to basically clean the pins. 
But I do have a feeling I may be popping you back out and replacing you. But who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky. If you're lucky, punk, I do you. All right, now I'm doing this. I'm just shaking to make sure there's no build up anywhere. This will dry. I just don't want there to be a glob, so rubbing alcohol, isopropyl, whatever you want to call it, in there. Okay, so now, what I was going to do is I'm going to take this, set this on here. I'm going to start reassembling this, but I'm not going to go all the way. I'm just going to put it together to a point where I can test these keys again. These small ones on the small. And then the big ones on the big. This little rubber grommet goes inside this groove here. Like so. Slide it down on that groove. Slide these on the pegs. Come on. Get up the grommet. Now what I want to do before I do that is I'm going to take and bend these down into the hole so they make contact with theirs again. And they stay in place. There. There. Now I don't have to put the screws on it yet, or the nuts on it. You up here, all this other stuff by the way, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the keyboard from the case here, but I'm not going to bolt it back in. I'll set it in, but I'm not bolting it in. Because i got to come back in and do this. I, <laughs> I forgot something. Note, hook this up before you do it. <laughs> Alright, see? Sometimes I make mistakes too. I get carried away. I get telling my stories. Like Grandpa Simpson said that one time on this show. They used to go to Onionville. Uh, we used to go to Shelbyville, but back in his day, they were, it's called Onionville because you have to wear an onion on your belt. Yeah, Grandpa Simpson with his stories that went nowhere. Now, see, I want to show you something here. You may or may not be able to see this. See this little ridge of plastic right here? I bet you that cost Coleco all of a penny. And it makes it almost perfect to put these membranes in. The reason I bring that up is Sinclair didn't bother. So, yeah, they fall apart and they break and they continue to fall apart. That little piece of plastic. I mean, so it cost a penny. So, I guess Clive Sinclair, Sir Clive Sinclair, needed his extra pennies so he can make his little Sir Clive machine that he had and his watch and all this other stuff. And this sometimes it's hard to get in the hole, but we get in there. See what I did? Grab both sides on that plastic, push it in. You might have to rock a little bit. Don't push from here. Don't, don't push out there. Don't bend it. Push it in so it slides in. If it doesn't want to go in, stop. Look at what you're doing. Try it again. You don't want to break it. Because unlike the ones from Sir Clive, you can't turn these back. I don't think you can. I've never turned one back. I don't think anybody's ever turned one back. Maybe somebody did. Maybe somebody got desperate and needed to turn one back. But on the ZX1000, the keyboard stops working. The first thing you do, the ZX, I got to keep correcting myself. Hey, we, we, we won the Revolutionary War. Why do I have to keep saying Z? Anywho. On the ZX1000, or ZX, the ZX81, the TS1000, if that breaks, you got to trim it back. And you keep trimming it back to the point where you can't use your keyboard anymore. All right, so now we got this hooked up here. And I'm just going to leave it loose so I can test these keys. And I'm going to switch to the other camera now. Now, right, we're back over here at the main system, or at the computer. And I'm going to plug her in and see what we get out of this. See if it works. I'm gonna plug my keyboard. I'm gonna plug in this one. And then power everything up. I just start leaving the monitor. Well, I use the master controller. I got this here and yet everything has switches on it now up to including the power supply that's right here that I got. 
Oh, this right here, this is Sharknado. I ride my bike back and forth to work and I saw him on the side of the road on Friday. Just sitting there, I guess some kid threw him out the window like, I don't like Sharknado no more. Or, Mommy, Sharknado fell out the window. Anyway, I saw it and it was still there Saturday, so I picked it up. All right, so we're in here and we got nothing again. So I'm going to assume that is a bad microprocessor. Look at that. I'm pressing. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Look at this. Look at this. Something had movement in it. See that? Is that a microprocessor allowing it? What I'm doing is my fingers back here and I'm moving the membrane a little bit trying to make a better contact. Now it went away. I got it for a second. I, I, with it being intermittent like that and it not coming back, I'm gonna say that's a microprocessor that's got an issue in there. Get my pencil. I'm gonna take this pencil right here and I can reach inside and put pressure in individual spots on the... You know, I think the microprocessor started working for a second and stopped. That's not the membrane. It's not the connector. Whoa. Catch up to me. He wasn't happy for a second. I do believe the microprocessor has an issue in there. I don't, I'm not sure what I got in my box of goodies when it comes to keyboard and microprocessors. I think I got an extra one. I have one that wasn't working, but I don't know why it wasn't working. I never did debug it. I just popped it out. But yeah. Well, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to plug in a different keyboard into this microprocessor and see if it works. And if that's the case, then it's the membrane somehow I got something whacked in there. If it doesn't work, then we've narrowed it down to it's not the membrane at all. So I'm gonna stop this camera, we'll go back to the bed. All right, so I'm back here. What I got here is my steampunk, my steampunk keyboard. I made this keyboard. I haven't finished it yet, but this works just great. I made this steampunk keyboard out of some interesting little parts. Looks kind of cool. I haven't finished it yet, but it works. We know it works. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to unhook it from the microprocessor that's in here and plug it into the other other keyboard and see if it works. If the QWERTY and U work in the tab, then we know somehow that other one is not the other system is not working. And now I will ah. I ain't got a microprocessor. Well, I know the keyboard works, so I can still do it that way. I thought I had a microprocessor in there, but I don't need that yet. That's sitting over there on the shelf. And if you notice, look, look, see this? This one I had to... Did I? Yeah, this one I had to add, um... When I was talking about here, I'm going to zoom that one in so you can see better. I used some of the conductive silver ink to repair some of these traces at the ends that were kind of messed up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this keyboard, put it in the bottom of here, and let me just make sure I take... The steampunk keyboard sits in the background. If you ever looked on my shelf behind me where I got all my like tchotchkes and stuff like that, you'll see the steampunk keyboard sitting back there. Nobody's asked me about it yet. There's so many things in that wall behind me that nobody asked me about. Like, what is that? What does that do? They just... Watch the first five or ten minutes of my video, and then I guess go away. So if you're still here, leave me in the comment, message the comment, say, Millie, I made it to the steampunk keyboard section. Just so I know that you made it to the steampunk keyboard section, because it'd be nice to know this. So 
take this out of the way. Uh, yeah, I better get me. I was gonna say I better get me some, at least two of these to hold it in place so it doesn't flop around and break on me. If you notice on the bottom of this one here, I haven't replaced all the screws. See, it's missing some of the screws. I didn't bother putting them in yet because this was when I was making sure it still worked. And now I got myself questioning, but I am darn positive. Yes, this thing did work. That's right. It did work. I got a video of me building this sitting in the hard drive because I was going to get to it. I got a printer that I pulled apart. Say you decide. That I was going to get steampunked, and I was going to steampunk a an atom too, and I never finished. Hmm. I'm going to put the other ones in there too because I'm realizing that this may touch the metal down below, the metal back, and I don't want to shorten it. Don't want to ruin it. Because I'm pretty sure somebody's like, <gasps> Millie, it's going to short out. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, I want to. Actually, no, I don't. It's not mine. So I always look at the numbers and the dates and stuff on here and wonder which one it is. So, like, this one is 5807221. This one's 5811262. What does that numbers mean? Are these dates they were made? Or, I don't know. Are they just, like, their serial number that they made for them? And who knows? That one was okay, though. It said okay. All right. So let's just put these in here. And yes, yes, yes. Before you say, make sure you hook it up. I will hook it up. Okay, that's a clip. Slip you in the grommet. And let's bend these down so they make connections stay down. Keep using my finger, and this metal hurts after a while, so I should just use this. In the evenings, me and my wife like to watch these crafters, these paper crafters. They do this crafty stuff, paper crafting and things on YouTube. And they talk a lot. And I've been picking up on it, and... I'm starting to like channel it and I'm talking more. So it's kind of fun. Anyways, we're gonna, yeah, I was gonna turn around and go do it without you taking you with me. I'm gonna stop this camera here and I'm gonna turn the other camera on. I'm gonna film that one. So we're back over here and this time I actually did leave the monitor on so I wouldn't have to push the buttons and get it turned on. We'll plug this keyboard in and see what we get. Put her on. Wow, I'm getting nothing now. Is this my keyboard actually bad? Maybe this keyboard has issues I didn't even realize when I made my steampunky out of it. Or it, it's been like 10 months. Maybe that's why I stopped making it. All right, so we're going to turn this one off and we're going to try a different keyboard. All right, so back over here on the bench. I just went down or went up on the shelf and got my box of keyboard stuff out. This is the microprocessor for the steampunk keyboard. I know this is good, so maybe just the steampunk keyboard sucks. So if worse comes to worse, I'll pop that out and swap it over. And all my other stuff. Here, here's the plungers I was talking about. I got two different types of plungers in here. I got plungers with the black and plungers without the black. I got all the, what do you call them? Those things. Oh, some Adam stuff, or some d data pack stuff. And parts of printer. Keys, keys, we got keys, lots of keys. But what I'm getting down in here, oh, there's some other some type of keyboard here. This one in here, oh, some extra things. Things, more data pack, data trash. Oh, I got a, I got a good grading that I can use. Right, the other ones. So this one right here, this one I wrote bad on it. 
This is from a few years ago. I don't know what part of it's bad. It could just be the whole board was bad. Maybe the wire was bad. The connector was bad. I think I just swapped it out. I don't think I, at the time, was playing with these. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this one out and put it into marks and see if that works. If that works, then we're good. If not, then I'll go with this one here. And if that don't work, then we're going to replace the whole board with a, with a good one. So, I got parts to put away. I've had about 100 Atom computers in the past six years. So, I've got a lot of stuff here. Because I'd buy them, I was buying them left and right online and basically flip them. I'd buy them, keep parts, flip them. I'd buy collections, flip it. Keep the stuff I wanted to. Well, I, I never really want, I mean, sometimes I wanted to flip it. But sometimes I wanted to keep my collection really big, but... When you've got like three more weeks until your next paycheck, because in my line of work I get paid quarterly, because my clients like to pay quarterly, and you got like three weeks left to your next big paycheck, and you're staring at a thousand dollars worth of atom equipment just sitting on the shelf that you don't use, well guess what? <laughs> We're selling some disk drives. We're selling some systems. So anywho, I've gotten past that finally. This was back in the beginning when I first started doing it. So let's go into this. Let's figure this one out. Again, I said I'm going to take the bad one here. I'm going to swap that chip over. Here, I'm going to set this on the side. I put up Mark's keys. I marked it Mark. So, Mark, Mark. I'm going to swap that one with this one here. Fascinating. That one is a different... It's the same number. Okay. Just different people making them. This is the AMI. I don't know who that is. I know it's not Mercedes. And this one is the same brand again. So let's just pop this one out of here. Then we're gonna hey, this is his keyboard. Let's take where's his case? Let's get set up to do this right. Set that in the case. Let's put some put the pieces back on. If you hear my phone ding, that's my wife. She's talking to me. Every summer, when summer gets here, you start getting the critters coming in your house, the little ants and stuff, they come in your house, they're trying to find places to live, and she just discovered that ants are coming in our daughter's room through a hole in the ceiling. Not a big hole, a very small hole. So I gotta take care of that. I told her, put a piece of tape on it for now, stop it. I got woke up at 2.30 last night, I heard noise outside, I look out my window, a little big old giant raccoon and two babies staring at me. I open the window and yell, get out of here, damn it. Then I look, then I get up and go down the hallway and looking for my cats. And all five of my cats are just chilling. They didn't even care. You'd think they'd be at the back door because that's right, the trash cans are right outside the back door. You'd think the cats would be staring at the back door like, what's going on? I said, nope. They were all crashed on the couch. Oh, yeah, they, they care when the coffee pot comes on. That coffee pot turns on at 6 o'clock in the morning, and Pepper and Dusty are right in my face, purring at me, trying to get my attention. So this is what we're going to work with here. I'm going to, uh, first off, let's bend these down again. I'm going to swap this thing out with the other one first. I'm just I'm preparing myself so I can just drop it in here, stick this on, test it. So we're gonna take this one out and I'm going to put a little M on this one so I know it's Mark. Take it over here. Normally I use my little curved screwdriver to get these loose because I don't want to break nothing. For one reason of this, well, I'm going to use it now. For one reason of this, it's difficult to get the curved screwdriver to lift it. Well, it was. Maybe, maybe pulling it up once got it. All right, so we'll take that right there. And I know. Somebody say, where the hell is Randy's static cable? Hey, it's back here. Sorry. My bad. The air's pretty damp right now. Because we've got storms coming. So, maybe I don't have to worry about static today. During the winter time, oh god, I had a problem with static. I'm walking around my office here, hardwood floors. I'm walking around my rubber sold sneakers on, and I am building up a charge. I'm walking around, I touch the doorknob and snap. It got to the point where I got my 
Got out my little slippers and I'm walking around the hardwood floor with my slippers just so I don't be able to charge up and fry something. All right, so this is, this one was, I'm just gonna remember this one came out the bad one. Well, obviously, duh. We'll give this a shot. If this don't work, I'm not gonna switch over to test, to cameras to show you the test of this one. If it works, I'll switch over. If not, I'm gonna say it didn't work and we'll try the next one. All right, so we're gonna pause this. All right, so absolutely nothing. So that microprocessor is definitely thoroughly dead. Yeah, like I said, I didn't know why I wrote bad on it. But I guess maybe I did swap it out, and then that's why it says bad. So I'm going to have to use the other one here. These Atom keyboards, they're kind of hard to come by. But they are built like a tank. So they shouldn't fail. Now, as a suggestion, if you use your Atom just to play Coleco games and you don't use the keyboard at all, like you're just sticking cartridges in there, you can just take and unplug the keyboard. Just like if you're not using the data packs, open the cover and unplug the data packs. Why would you want to do that, you say? You're going to stop it from taking a chance of getting destroyed getting burnt out. So just unplug the keyboard. Only plug it in if you need it. Especially the data drives. If you're not using the data drives at all, unplug them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark this one as buggy. Where'd I do my marker? Mr. Marker, where'd you go? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so unplug the data drives from your computer. And that way you don't take a chance on burning them out. Plug them back in if you need to use them. Or you can be like me, on my main system over here. I, I unhooked the actual 6801 that runs the data drives. Part of an experiment that I'll eventually get around to finishing. I have so many experiments going. I wish I had someone that lived near me that was into coding. What do you, you know, using the internet, you don't have to live near me, but I wish I had like a buddy that was really into coding that I can say, hey, what about doing this? And they say, yeah, that's a great idea. And they, they do it and vice versa, you know, just because I get so many ideas and I start them and then it's like, okay, I got to stop to do this. And like right now I'm working on a video game, which, is a video game, which I'm going to finish. I got to finish Crazy Climber. Well, it's not Crazy Climber. It's going to be like it, but better. I got to finish that one because that's a revenue stream. So that was a good one here, and again, I'm just going to go over there and I'm going to test this, and if it works, then I'll switch camera, then I'll come back here and tell you it worked, and we'll put it together, and then we'll, we'll show you the testing. So we learned something fascinating. It didn't work. And you're like, well, duh. No, that's fascinating because that means, that's the bad one. That's the good one. That means marks. 6801 is still good. It's not that. It has to be something on the board here that's bad. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is now, now we do is like process of elimination. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to mark this. This is uh, this is a mark board. I'm going to mark 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 mark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this board. Out. Take my 6801 off of it. Don't bend. Put that over here. I'm going to take this one, which I consider bad, which may just be a bad CPU. Now, because we swapped the CPU over and dead there too. Completely dead. Not just like if the CPU was good and I put it on Mark's board here and it's the board that's bad, then I should have had an issue with um, QWERTY being not working. I'm, I'm pausing here for a second because I'm stopping for a second. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure everything is still here. Transistors are here, yes. 
Because something in the back of my head reminded me, hey, do you remember that time you needed something and you took it off of something else? And I'm just checking to make sure that I'm not like missing a resistor or a transistor on this board here. I don't see it missing. Let me just make sure we're good too. Yeah, I don't, don't want to be one of those ones where borrow from Peter to pay Paul. Alright, so. That's Mark's board here. This is mine here. This is the bad board. Again, I'm just checking to make sure there's nothing missing. Make sure all the resistors are there. Everything's there. Okay. Yeah, because I, I was working on a project uh, a few months ago, and it just dawned on me that at one point I was shopping around for a resistor that I didn't have that I ended up having to just order one. But... Uh, part of me said, wait, did you take one off the keyboard? But I think what I did is I looked and it wasn't on there, so I didn't take one off. Yeah, my, my... Um, ooh, something shiny sometimes kicks in and I start a project and then it's like, if I can't do it right then, it's like, next. Because so many things I want to do. So little time to do it. Make sure the pins are good. So, what we got here is we have... This is... Nope, this is not marked. That's my good one. Or my one that came out of here, which I should just pick off in that. Come on. Alright, we should set you over here. we we'll take the one that's marked, and put that one in here. And we're putting it into the one that I had marked as bad, which I now learned that... I think it's just the CPU is bad, and it's quite possible what happened is I had a keyboard in the past few years which didn't work, and I narrowed it down to, okay, it's here, and I just swapped the CPU out with the one that was in this, or something like that, I don't know. Anywho, I'm going to put marks in here. Okay, we're going to try that, see what that does. Because I, I did mark this one. Yeah, okay, I marked that one bad. I just want to make sure I marked that CPU that doesn't work as bad. But how do you know it doesn't work? I don't. I'm guessing. No, and I'm missing a set there. Or else you can be sitting there like, it doesn't work. What did I do wrong? No, I didn't hook it up. There we go. Now back to here. All right, now I'm going to pause this. I'm going to try it again. Okay, so we're back over here now, and I got it plugged in, and look what we got. They all work now. So it's fascinating. What we learned here, or what we discovered, is that, ooh, I got to watch out. I'm rolling my cables on the floor. What we learned is that the CPU is good, which is great because that CPU is irreplaceable. But what's bad is, um, I'm standing up, you get to see Frankie says relax on my t-shirt. We learned is bad is something on here is bad no problem because guess what every one of these things is off the shelf part of one place or another so one of these things can be replaced it could be a capacitor it could be a diode it could be who got no it could be one of these transistors is shot who knows but we know there's something bad on here so that's good that we know that because now I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna send this back to Mark because this I can fix at any time in the future when I get a chance I'll just write down in here something bad on board and I'll chase it down and I'll figure it out It could be something as simple as a broken solder joint in the back. Who knows? But Microprocessor works, so I'm going to switch back over to the bench. We're gonna assemble it and we'll be done All right, so let's reassemble Mark's keyboard here for him Now that we fixed it and again, really what I did is I just narrowed down and logically figured out what was wrong with it. Did I actually fix it? Yes. Did I do any repairs on it? Not really. I will figure out what's wrong with that circuit board. I just don't have the time for that right now. Uh, that'll sit in my box as I wrote down on it something wrong on board. And the day I get a keyboard, to, hey, get back here, spacer. The day I get a keyboard that has a bad circuit board, I'll then go to that one and say, okay, let's figure this thing out and fix it. Or the day I get bored and have nothing better to do, I'll fix it then. 
But for now, we're going to reassemble Mark's keyboard. Let me just make sure I got all the pieces in there good. What's going on? Why are you sticking there, huh? Some come loose? I'm looking up inside just to make sure nothing moved. Oh. oh, there it goes. Okay, I just wasn't trying hard enough. Alrighty, let's put some washers on here. If you wonder why I'm quiet for all of a sudden, I was looking in my screw box here and where I put all the screws and stuff, and I'm thinking, okay, why do I got extra screws? Then I realized, oh, I, I still have some left from the steampunk keyboard. I can put back on there. Now, what I'm gonna do here is take my, where do you go? Take my isopropyl alcohol and just get rid of the word bad so that nobody thinks it was bad. And while I'm in here, I'll wash it down, get the dirt out of it. Get here, wipe it down, get some of that dirt out of it. Give him a screwdriver, a proper screwdriver. Yeah, now I have a keyboard, or Mark has a keyboard he can use, and I will put together some software for him and send him some software and he'll be good to go. And I hope he enjoys his computer. I do hope and this is not a any kind of um, aspersion on Mark because I don't know the guy that well and I'm going to benefit, benefit of the doubt. But I do hope that he is going to enjoy his Adam and use his Adam. Because there's been a few people in the past who are in the past four or five years where I've reached out and I've helped them get their stuff together and helped them get software together and all that stuff and what held their hand and got their whole system working and everything was all hunky dory and great and then you see it listed on eBay. They were just flipping it. And I helped them increase their profit margin. So now sometimes when people go on to the groups and they say, what's this worth, what's this worth, I'll lowball the hell out of them. They got a disk drive, they'll put a disk drive on the group and they'll say, what's this worth, I'll say 20 bucks. I know damn well it's not worth 20 bucks, but guess what? I'm not gonna help you make a profit. I'll help you enjoy your computer, I'll help you enjoy your Atom and have a great time with your Atom, but I'm not gonna sit there and help you make a profit. You ask me what it's worth and you're willing to contribute to the archive or at least be up front and say, hey, look, I got this system here. I think I got me a damn good deal. I got it in the state. I paid 50 bucks for this old computer and this big ass box and disk drives and software and I have no clue what it is and I don't want to learn. But I'd like to sell it for as much as I can possibly get for it. What do you think's worth? Now, I'll, I'll be honest because I've been honest with people like that when they come up and they just say I got this I have no use for this I don't know what it's worth I just want to sell it what do you think it's worth and I'll, I'll tell them I, I, there's been a number of times somebody asked me I keep referring to disk drives because disk drives are the ones where people are always questioning what their value is I mean there's a guy on eBay who's been trying to sell his disk drive now for almost a year for 500 bucks good luck with that it ain't gonna happen unless you find a sucker but there's people that will ask me, and they say, I got this disk drive, what's it's worth? And I'll, I'll tell them right out, right, honest. If they don't have a power supply, they don't have a plug-in into the computer to test it, I'll tell them, honestly, it's parts. That's all it is. Unless you can turn that thing on and show that it works to somebody, all it is is parts. And if you got a disk drive that's, I mean, one, uh, a couple years ago, or two years ago, somebody listed four disk drives on eBay. And he had, he was listing each one of them on there for $150 a piece. No power supplies. One of them's missing the front cover. The the bezel. And he was going to $150 a piece. And I emailed him directly. I said, I said um, you have no idea if these work. A working disk drive starts at 150 
in the box and go for 225 I mean, they've gotten up to 400 but 150 to $200 is what a working disk drive with everything goes for. I said, you got four disk drives, you have no clue if they work, and you want a $150 piece for me. I told him, I said, if you, if you just want to if you just want to sell these and give them out your hands, I'll give you 300 for all four the way they sit. Not even going to question if they work or not. He took me up on it, and I got it. So I got all four of them, plus I think it was $60 to ship them all to me. I got them. I tested um, the first drive. I, I, every drive I got, I took apart and cleaned and then put back together. Just, well, yeah, cleaned it. Did, well, my first thing I did, I, I just do the shake test, make sure there's nothing broken. And then I plugged them into the power supply I had, and two of them lit up and worked, two of them didn't. And then I took the two of them that lit up and turned on and cleaned them out inside and out and tested them. They worked great. So I had two drives there. So I made back my money with those two. The other two, when I opened them up, all the wiring going from the main board to the disk drive motors was eaten up. I don't know what ate it. I don't know what got in there to be able to eat those wires, but they ate them up. So I had to rewire all them and stuff like that. And I got them all working. Every one of them worked. And I, I sold the first two, I think, for 150 I mean, I didn't try to make a profit. I didn't say, hey, guys, 300 bucks. I just put up there 150 bucks. Because when, like when I sell things, I just want to sell them. I don't want to sit there and argue them back and forth with the auctions. I did in the beginning. So, first two went up 150 bucks. The second two, I sold, I believe, for 125 150 something like that. I had eventually repaired the last one. Or no, actually, no, the last one I sold for $100, even though it completely worked. I sold it as a second drive to somebody who bought the, the other one. So he would have a backup because I didn't have the front bezel. But yeah, I took my $360 investment and turned it around to like, I think, 550 600 is what I got out of it. But it took me like six months to clean them up, make sure they all work. I took those chance. I mean, I could have just got them and they could have been garbage. And then I would have been out 300 some bucks. It's like with these data drives I got. I mean, they could all be garbage. But so far, I've gotten nine good ones out of the 30, and I haven't even taken any of them apart yet. I just pulled them apart. Well, taken them apart, but I haven't taken them apart like started probing the parts. I've taken apart, cleaned them, put them back together, did super testing on nine so far, perfect. I don't care what one guy says. And the other ones I are sitting there, they've been all diagnosed. So as I get time, I'll bring them over here on the bench. I'll pull them apart and test them out, fix them, swap parts around everything. So, enough of my rambling, let's go back over to the main board and give this one a test and see what happened, or the main computer. Alright, so we're back over here and I've got it plugged in, put back together and plugged in, and I'm on here. And they all working now. Yep, everybody's working. I'm just going to do a quick test of all of them. Actually, you know what? Here, let me get a clean screen. I got my volume down there, otherwise you'll be hearing it making noises. But let's see. go here. Let's go to, um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Screen options. Um, scrolling window. Let's get rid of this little typey bottom thing on the bottom there. Yeah, that's better. All right, so let's just test out all the keys first. We know the smart, the smart keys are working. I just used them. So I'm just going to go across the alphabet keys. Test the control, I hold it control and press M, which is the same as hitting enter. Alright. Alright, so all the keys work and she is good to go. I'm gonna reach over in here, let's see. I'm gonna take a sticker, slap it on the back, and send it back to Mark. Have a great day.